Welcome, my name is Gary Krinke. I'm the director of an upcoming production of Frankenstein here at Fullerton College. And the theater department is really proud to introduce you to this premiere of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, adapted by Bill Mittler, one of our alumni and current faculty members. So today, in three very short sessions, we're going to reveal how we're going to create this project. And it is going to be led today by our costume designer, Mella Hoyt Hayden, and the makeup and design team associated with this as they create a monster. So, creativity is often sparked or instigated by the need to re-envision an image. Frankenstein. How do you reinvent that iconic image for the 21st century? We started, the team did, with the past. Early horror films created the flat-topped head, bolts on the side, lumbering image we all think of as Frankenstein, a stiff, mechanical man who had trouble bending his arms and legs, but did have super strength. Before film, Mary Shelley's creature was an image one created in one's mind as you read the novel. Over a century later, the film industry's version became a universal image reinforced through a plethora of B-movies. It was during the 1960s that television created a similar but comic version of Frankenstein, renamed Herman Munster, and Technicolor envisioned him as green. The horror of man creating man was replaced by Herman and family. Same creature, new name, and the bolt stayed. It wasn't until the 1980s that the creature was finally visualized closer to Mary Shelley's written version, man pieced together, man created from men. But that image did not change a public's perception of what Frankenstein should look like. Kenneth Branagh's film quickly went from film to video, and the iconic image stayed green with bolts and a smile. Segway to the 21st century and our need to reinvent and reimage the, the creature. What is science fiction in the 21st century? Welcome to steampunk. The term denotes fictional works set in an era or world where steam power is still widely used, usually the 19th century and often Victorian era Britain, science fiction and fantasy. So what does this really mean visually? As a designer, what do we think? What do we, where do we start? Well, with the emergence of the industrial steam-based world, man becomes the explorer of the unknown and the creator, creator of all things mechanical. The belief is that machines will enable us to succeed or we may turn into the machine. From industrial and scientific accoutrements, the re-imaging of proper attire. The boundaries of science are pushed and there is a re-envisioning of the common and not so common weaponry. Everyday clothing accessories take on a gender switch. Female corsetry becomes outerwear. The equivalent of male body armor along with steam generated power. All of this are the makings and trappings of a well-dressed, fashion forward, scientific neo-Victorian. Steampunk, a population living in a steam-generated world as seen through the eyes of the 21st century looking back. A time when items that are commonplace today are created using materials known to be available during the turn of the last century. Mechanically made, but with the Victorian attention to detail and beauty. Gears, clocks overcoming the environment, refashioning what was, becoming the machine, and the ability to go where no man has gone before. Man's desire to create in a mechanized world, even in the arts, and always with panache and style. Man the explorer, man the controller of the universe, man the creator of all forms of life. So steampunk has invaded our lives before even you or I knew the word. 
Hollywood. The film industry was the first place to show a place to show in the past, but add elements of the future, re-envisioned in a way that could have been possible but wasn't. Steampunk, underwear as outerwear, the use of futuristic science and weaponry, explorers in long coats, remember that one. Man, scientifically overcoming his environment, creature-like body armor, long coats, Oh, long coats and uniforms, it's those boys. Newer versions of creatures, always industrial goggles, and women, you are out of the kitchen. And then there are those who embrace steampunk beyond the film or literary arenas, dressed as neo-Victorians, donning futuristic accoutrements. Lynn Schultz is our blank canvas, and I hope he's coming out now. Here they come, okay, on which to, we are going to re-envision Mary Shelley's creature in tune with the 21st century and the world of steampunk. Stephen John is the artistry behind this creation. Both Len and Stephen will be back for you at 2.50 for you to see Steve perform the actual hands-on process of creation of the creature, remembering we are going from a new steampunk look at Frankenstein. Um, Steve has already applied onto Len the basis for the scar effect. We did that earlier so we could speed up a little bit. The product he is using is called a rigid collodion. It's an ether-based plastic and when it's applied it immediately binds to the, with the skin. Then the ether, as if it was alcohol-based product, disappears completely, evaporates away, and this pulls the skin together and starts to create a 3D effect. Thank you, science, for the new products that are out there. Then he is combining, he, on top of it, um, a basic highlight and shadow to make a dramatic effect. Because you actually can see the, um, the effect, the scar effect, without this basic highlight and shadow. But the audience will not be able to. Just as if you were close up, you could see it. But it would also be um, clear. Just pull the skin together. Now you'll notice that he is going from the makeup palette right to Lynn's face and right back to the makeup palette and right back to Lynn's um, face. And I need to say this because it will be taped. We are using an alcohol, a 99% alcohol based product here, which means that the makeup palette is being activated with the 99% alcohol so that we have a sanitation thing going on at all times. So it is sanitizing his brush and then he picks up um, what, whoever Len is, the chemicals within it, puts it back in the palette, it is sanitized back and forth. And it's something that we really have to consider in this day and age is the type of products that we use. Um, so I'm, let's see what he's doing right now. He's placing in the red. You'll start with a red and then he will add to that um, a dark blue in a moment. Okay. One of the things that we have to consider is that he is going to be doing this for stage, which is very different than film makeup. Film, you are on a screen and your head is 30 feet in the air, or 30 feet wide at a time. And now with HD, it's a totally different ball game. In stage, we are dealing with the fact that you, the audience, are sitting in the dark at a distance, and the actor has lights coming from above, from the sides, and sometimes from below and behind. And without um, a sharper contrast, they could have what we call pancake face. So we need to exaggerate and make it much stronger than you would for film in any way, shape, or form. So going on to blue, I think now. Yes, just going into the blue. What he's doing is he's creating um, the natural bruising that occurs during or as a result of surgery. Remember earlier I talked about the piece together man. Man created from men, more than one that means, okay? So our Frankenstein will be pieced together, but we actually don't piece Len together. <laughs> Okay, we don't have CGI here. Maybe someone would like to donate. Okay, um, so he's doing this natural bruising, which is the natural response of the body for any form of trauma. Obviously, if you piece together, and we have to think this way, what is happening to the body? There is going to be trauma, all right? And so we have to try to duplicate that. 
So some of the process of actually just doing makeup is looking at um, medical journals, looking at pictures, um, looking at morgue pictures. What does it look like? What are the beginning stages? What are the middle stages? What are the stages afterwards? It gets a little gruesome at some times, but you have to duplicate those types of things. So you've got this red and this blue, which as we all remember from basic color theory, will turn into purple wherever it crosses over. It will not cross over always. Sometimes there's red, sometimes there's blue, but where it does, it creates that purple, that dark purple, which will give a little bit the deep, deep shadowing in it. And, okay, now he's um, adding, and are you adding a little bit of the fresh scab? Okay, fresh scab is the darkest um, part of the goo that goes in, so we have to create a shadow within that. And on top of that, we have created our own blood gel using different products, and that will be placed on top, so that's like a neutral, a, a middle color. And then on top of that, um, he will um, finish it off with some fake blood, three layers of blood to give it depth so it doesn't look like a very cheap Halloween show. And then mass casualty powder on top of that. All right, so how are we doing for time? We're almost off this. Okay, so as they wrap this up, when you see Len again, all right, you're going to see him in a commercial that was made, the, cre the team created for the Fullerton Shadows Festival. We would like to, you to be able to see how the final effect is on a screen, but then also you will be able to see Steven's work in a theatrical sense because Len will come out with a finished product. So while they had a lot of time just to get a little collodion on for this, from now until the next time you see them, they're going to be back there hurrying, scurrying, and finishing up our creation. This will be my last entry in this journal. A classic tale told through modern eyes. Twenty years have passed and I have My dearest Victor. Here, at the end of the world. I have missed you over these past months. In the beginning, all I wanted was to be able to save the ones I loved. At what point did a man's dream turn into a nightmare? To defeat death. I haven't heard anything of your new world. An abomination. I will destroy this thing that I have created. Follow a story of love, fear, birth, and death. Journey with us as we rediscover Frankenstein.